A lacrosse throw can be classified as a closed skill because the person initiates the start and the finish of the action. It is a gross motor skill as the motor skill requires the use of large muscles. It is also classified as a discrete skill as it has a specific beginning and end, this being the start of the throw and the release of the ball. A lacrosse catch is classified as an open skill because their actions are dependent on receiving a ball from another player. This skill is a fine motor skill as it requires hand-eye coordination as the player has to watch the ball in the air into their stick pocket. It is a continuous skill because you are receiving a pass from another and it doesn't always go straight to the stick. For example, it may go higher or lower than anticipated. For a lacrosse throw, the player has their dominant hand at the top with their other hand towards the bottom of the stick. Starting with the head of the stick near their head, they push the stick forward and at the same time take a step with their opposite foot, making sure they follow through with the stick. Here the teacher is instructing the learner how to correctly perform the skill whilst using verbal cues such as take a step and follow through. In a study done by Larson and Sir Barbaro, observational feedback via side-by-side -side position with simultaneous verbal cues appear to have had the greatest impact on performance. This method of teaching is demonstrated in this clip. To measure throw performance, we had the participant throwing the ball against a wall where there was a drawn target. The idea was to see how many times they could hit the target. To measure catch performance, the learner was stationary receiving the ball. The number of catches in a row was recorded to assess skill level. Part practice was implemented into the early stages of learning where the learner focused only on the throw, letting the ball run past without catching. This reduces the skill complexity and allows the learner to concentrate on the one skill. A study by Chan et al. found part practice to be more beneficial in beginner learners compared to novice learners who benefited from whole practice. Augmented feedback was used in between throws and during catch part practice. The use of performance adjustment through verbal feedback as well as rewarding throws done properly with positive feedback was implemented. Augmented feedback was removed in later stages of learning to ensure retention of instructions. This method of learning is supported by a study conducted by Ronzi et al who found augmented feedback to be beneficial to performance. However, when learners became too dependent on feedback, performance decreased. As the augmented feedback was withdrawn in the final weeks of the program, the learner should be expected to retain more information on how to perform the skill with reduced errors. This is supported by the guidance hypothesis in a study conducted by Weinstein, Pohl and Lathway, who found augmented feedback to be beneficial, however had a negative effect when relied upon. cognitive phase of learning, the learner observed the instructor correctly performing the skill, then attempted to replicate the correct technique. It is expected during this stage that errors will occur as the learner understands the basics of the skill. The part practice drills were put into place during these first two weeks. Various drills were separately practiced including throwing without the ball and throwing with the ball at a target. Catching was practiced with the ball being thrown to the learner and the learner getting a feel of how to move with the stick. In the associative phase, there are fewer errors as the learner completes the skill. 
In this stage, the learner is able to react and adapt to the movement where necessary. They also develop their skills in whole practice and are able to perform the skill in an increased pressure environment. During weeks three and five, the part practice drills were put together to simulate what would happen in a game setting. Whole practice includes including drills that incorporated both throwing and catching were implemented during these weeks. Due to the program only lasting five weeks, the learner did not reach the autonomous stage. If a lacrosse player was to be in the autonomous stage, they would be able to perform the skills automatically and their focus mainly being external. Lastly, they are able to have self-control and often make unconscious decisions as they are professional. Our attention test was completed two weeks after the post test. This test included counting how many throws reached the target. The catching test was how many balls the participant caught in a row. The pre-test results showed the learner to be able to perform 7 consecutive throws and 13 consecutive catches. After the completion of the program, a post-test was conducted with results showing an improvement. The learner was able to perform 15 consecutive throws and 20 consecutive catches. In order to see how much the student had retained, a retention test was performed two weeks after the completion of the program, giving results of 12 in throws and 19 consecutive catches. Got nothing.